You need a therapist, not a business coach. You want to be in the big leagues. You can't be sitting around saying, I just don't post because like that, that's therapy. Okay. You got to get over that. My name is John Shea. I am from Massachusetts in the United States. And currently I help people start online businesses where they can go out and do affiliate marketing with Amazon specifically with Amazon's influencer program. You help people make money by doing product reviews. That's an interesting little like, oh, how do I do that? Well, first of all, how much money can someone realistically make doing product reviews? I think a lot of it's going to depend on the types of products they own and like how much time they're dedicating to it. I typically do about 100 videos a month and I make anywhere from 10 to upwards of 20,000 a month. 10 to 20 grand a month doing product reviews. Okay. So I just, I need to hear your pitch just in like one minute, pitch me on this thing. You go on, on, on shopping online on Amazon, you uh, find there's videos basically that you could publish just like you would on YouTube. If someone watches this video for 30 seconds that you produce and then buys that product, you get a small percentage, anywhere from one to 4% commission. And if you produce videos for products that you own, people can watch these videos and you'll earn that percentage, you know, from the video reviews. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way to explain it. You want a better way to explain it? Yeah, let me think about this here. One minute, right? Because I have an hour webinar, right? So how do I explain it in a minute? Well, I, I know how I would pitch this. I know exactly how I would pitch this. Okay. Exactly. And I'll, I'll give you a pitch here in a little bit. Let me ask some other All questions right. here. I know, like, literally, I got the whole video sales letter, the whole pitch, the whole ex thing for this. Okay. How much money did you make doing this last month? How much have I made selling it to other people, like selling it as a course? Selling your, your what is it a course? Consulting? What is it? Yeah, I have a course. So now how much total, money did you make last month selling your online course? My net last month from like the tail end of a promotion was about 2,700 bucks. How much did you make last month doing product reviews? My last payout would have been what I shared with you, which was about 13,000. So you made $13,000 last month doing product reviews and you made $2,500 teaching people how to do product reviews. Yeah, about 3,000 specifically. About 3,000. So you're pretty good at doing product reviews, but not so good at marketing. <laughs> at the moment, yeah, I'm trying to, I hired someone to help me with ads and that's not working out. They're so, doing a fantastic job. No, they're doing, they have acquired me zero. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Most of the time when people hire people to run ads for them, they have a messed up offer, a messed up way to get customers online, and they expect the advertiser, the, the Facebook ad person to fix that for them. That's mm -hmm. not their job. Their job is to run traffic to an offer you've already figured out. They're not your personal Jesus Christ. So Yeah, no, um, I totally get it. I, I'll find out real quick here who the problem is, and I'll tell you who the problem is. So let me take a look at your bank statement. Let's see what kind of shenanigans that you have have going on here. So first thing I notice is I see PayPal and I see Stripe here. So what are you using to process your payments? So either PayPal or Stripe. Why? Uh, it just gives people an option. Why don't rough. you have a real merchant account like the big boys? I don't know. I didn't really even know it was an option, to be honest. You don't know that you can get a real merchant account. You don't have to use companies like Stripe and PayPal. Yeah, no, I didn't really. I guess I never looked into it. I didn't or I didn't know that <laughs> that there would be a better option, you know. You're Use. a researcher, aren't you, John? Yeah, no. On that, well, am I going to save a, like a massive amount of money switching to another vendor? You're going to save money on merchant fees, but also if you have a real merchant account and you have a chargeback, you can actually talk to somebody at your bank or at the merchant company and explain the situation where a Stripe's just going to be like denied and they're going to give the money back to their customer. As well, if you make too much money, uh, at Stripe too quickly or PayPal, they can freeze your accounts for no reason and keep that money. Whereas if it's with a real merchant account, they're going to be like, good job, John, you're a real good businessman and let you keep making money. Yeah, okay? yeah. So that's number one. Number two, so you got a $12,938 payment from Amazon payments. What's that? So that is from the product reviews. That is so you have your course business and you have your Amazon business in the same account. Yeah, essentially, I just exported just business expenses. Is this a business account or a personal account? It's a personal account, but I... Oh, my God. I do it as tax-wise in everything in the same account. Do also, you have an LLC? No, I just file self-employed. Bro, you just like giving money to Uncle Sam, huh? You might be able to say otherwise on this, but as far as I could tell from what I researched, the only advantage of me going and getting an LLC was that's protecting the, no. you know... No. There wasn't like a specific tax no. advantage to that. 
So there, I could. You don't think there's a tax advantage to having an LLC? I couldn't get a distinctive answer on that anywhere that I did research. Well, so far we've established you're amazing at research. So, <laughs> who did you ask? Did you ask a CPA? Yeah, a couple of them. So, did you ask about a sub S election? No. Um, did they mention a sub S election? Nope. I don't know what that is. Go get a better CPA. I'm not going to get into that because I'm not a tax person. I'm just a guy that makes a lot of money and doesn't like to give it to the the United States. So think about it this way. If somebody sues you in your coaching business or your your online course business, they can go after your Amazon payments. And because it's personal, they could even go after your house. Right. No, I knew that. You don't think that's worth spending the $75 or $120 online to form an LLC? No, I agree with you. It probably is something I should be doing. I guess at one point I had formed one, but then I just wasn't really finally you already had one and you didn't use it yeah i basically like let it all right well this is this is going swimmingly so far okay so fourteen thousand five hundred dollars to the <laughs> shocking we have a fourteen thousand yeah. five hundred dollar payment to the irs wow yes. yeah that's the quarterly hold on a second whoa 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 how much did you make that quarter? The last three months, my profit and loss was like thirty-two thousand. You paid fifteen grand in taxes on thirty-two thousand dollars in profit. Yeah, it was like really f-ing high. Yeah, it, I'm just basing it on what I'm working with my accountant on and whatever QuickBooks is spitting back to me. Did you get your accountant from the same place you got your Facebook media buyer? The I don't know what the. F- I'm doing school. That's an area that I will admit I am very weak. That's a big area, bro. That's like one of your biggest expenses is taxes. Look, you need to get an LLC and a business bank account, separate these financials so you can get a hold on this. Because right now I guarantee you, you have no idea where the money's coming, going up, down, left, right. And that's why half of it's going out to the IRS so that somebody can, on food stamps can buy porterhouse steaks. I'm just saying, all right, what's Brooks Internet Marketing? Before I was doing the product review business, I was selling SEO services to clients. I essentially had several clients that when I would refer someone, no different if you got a Facebook ads client or whatever it was, I would refer another agency or another business to do the client work. Basically, whoever I referred the work to would give me a 15% recurring cut on any recurring billing. So that is me paying my outsourced guy. He handles all the client work, the reporting. He does everything. I just invoice the clients. That's it. Well, that sounds like a pretty good business. Why don't you do that? I was. I just got bored of doing sales calls. And I don't know. I wasn't. Are you under the impression that that your business is supposed to entertain you? Yeah, that's why I built this room, Dan. What do you think? They go to a movie. Your business is not supposed to entertain you. It's supposed to make you money so that you can take that money and do things that entertain you. You don't shut down a business that's making money. You don't even have to do the work for because it's boring. All right. That's a terrible reason. Why don't you sell that business? I mean, there really isn't anything to sell. It's somebody else doing all the work. It's basically there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an arbitrage business. It's, it's it, What do you mean? The, so you're telling me when you own a, when you're a business owner, you own an ice cream shop and you hire employees to scoop the ice cream out and put it on the cone for the customer. That's not a real business because someone else is doing the work. They're scooping it. And you're sitting at home. Playing. The hardest part would be I'm I'm still like the front and center of the ice cream shop because it's all coming from my Upwork profile. It's not like I could be like, hey, Dan, you can have the John Shea Upwork profile. So how hard would it be for you to double that business? It wouldn't be super hard. I was doing it where I had- What did you make in profit from that business last month? Not a lot because a lot of the clients churned, like people just leave or whatever. And it's, you know, it's just typical. What did you make? Probably like 1,500 to two grand. You made almost as much in a business you put zero effort into as a business you're putting a ton of effort into. I'm putting way more into the review business. No, not the review business, the teaching. Well, yeah, no, definitely. I made probably- about the same, if not more. It's- All right, that's fine. I just want to hear you say it out loud. Yeah, okay. no, it's definitely crossed my mind. Don't don't get. I was doing that for years. I was also teaching what I was doing before, and I basically stopped all that. I okay, kind of great. Said, What's your yeah, website? NoShameIncome.com. That is ironic. I want to learn how to generate a five-figure per month income reviewing physical products. Learn how to make a full-time income sharing your opinion about products you actually enjoy using. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's pretty vanilla. Like, you're about yeah. as white as white gets. Yeah. I can tell just by this website you can't dance. Yeah, it's pretty vanilla. It has no attitude. It has no personality. It's just, like, kind of, like, blah. Oh, you go to Teachable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Play it out there. How, how much of these are you selling? Well, right now, I, I had a bunch of courses that I made over the years, way back years and years ago for Udemy, right? So tell and me how I, much you're making with, with this page right here. I went to your website. 
I seen your boring face, and that then... looks like you didn't even go to the right link, or maybe something's messed up there. I oh, oh, jeez! Yeah. Oh, the, it does not. Your website's not going to the right link. I wonder why I'm not making any money. Okay, I'm not sending traffic here, but then why would you give me this website? The link to sign up for the workshop, the webinar, is where I'm. Yes, this, this is it right here. Three step process I use to generate five figure per month income doing physical products in under sixty days. Typical business coach BS. Okay, you said you were charging nine ninety seven for it. Correct. And what does this webinar convert at? Probably right around 10%. That is something I've been having a tough time to determine that I was hoping maybe you could shed some light on. Wait, wait, wait. Rewind 10% BS. You know how high 10%. So if 100 people register for this, 10 people buy a $1,000 course. Yeah, and no, I don't think it's no, that high. It's I, not that high. No. It's probably no. like. That's, that is an ungodly. You are four and Captain Marvel, Superman, the Incredible Hulk, and Thanos tied into one if you're converting at, at 10%. That's an ungodly conversion rate you're not converting at 10 percent, so you don't know what the webinar is converting yeah I, I have a hard time determining this because i have like a conversion number that the cart checkout is giving me but that's not really true to people you know 100 people could watch the webinar but that doesn't mean they clicked over to check out the offer right how many people registered for this webinar last month so i had 105 how many people bought so from this and this was all paid nobody actually bought so that's a 0% conversion rate. On, on Yes, on paid traffic currently it is not converting well. It is converting really well with JV traffic and my own list. So JV meaning you have somebody else come and do a webinar. So you partner with another influencer. They send this to their list and you guys split the profits. So how many JVs did you do last month? Last month, I didn't do any. I just did one with my own list. I haven't been doing as many of those, but now that's something that... So you're doing a lot of the thing that doesn't work and none of the thing that does. Well, that's the thing was I was in kind of a mindset of I didn't really want to feel like my business had to rely on just promoting other people's crap. Yes, it's working. Would I rather, I'd rather figure out something on my own where I don't have to rely on JV. The last JV you did, how much money did you make? Um, let me take a look here because I pulled it up. How do you not know this stuff? Well, I guess I needed some help. That's a good thing for me. I just don't like the lack of attention to good decisions. Like the lack of attention to detail is bothersome for me. There's one thing being bad at something. There's another thing being careless. Right. I'm trying to see if there's like an easy way to pull it up. This is good. You don't know how to check your numbers. The, well, you I just, just didn't have. Business and have no idea how to check our sales numbers. Yay. So I've done roughly 10 JV deals. Okay, great. Let's let's go with that. How many people did you get registered for this webinar with a JV deal? How many? Um, I have it all like broken up based on specific lists and active campaigns, so I could go in and like start pulling all that stuff together. But I don't have like a- you don't have like a spreadsheet where you can track this stuff. Like, why don't you not know this stuff? So how you how do you expect to make good decisions in your business? Know what to do more of if you can't even track it. You can It takes you twenty minutes to just find how much money you made with something. How do you expect to even know what to do? Yeah, no, I agree. It's a little fly by night. Piece. How much money know. have you made? Holy moly. How much money have you made with JVs? So total. Um... This is my problem with business coaches. Do okay, you want me to tell you the problem? The, here's the problem is that you're the one coach that's supposed to be good at marketing. If you're a fitness coach, you can suck at marketing and that's okay. If you are a relationship coach, you can suck at marketing and that's okay. But if you're a business coach, you have the responsibility responsibility to know this shit. This is like literally being a doctor and not going to medical school, not knowing how to do this. This is a response. This is a duty to know this stuff. Okay. It's a duty. You teach people how to make money and you don't even know how much money you made. That's not okay. So my net revenue was 90 K and I've paid out 55,000. What time period? That was like starting right around like June, July last year. So one year, you did $90,000 in JV deals and you paid out 55 of that. What do you pay, 60% commission? 50%. So 76% of it was from affiliates. The remainder is from my own promotions. Oh, so 90 is total? Yes. Well, then how did you pay out 55 in commissions? That math math disagrees with you. There's 23,000 in refunds. 23,000? There was a huge issue initially with the program when I initially launched it. There was like a lack of something that was causing people to 
bail out. Did you fix it? I fixed it, yeah. Since then, have, how many refunds have you had? I still get some, but a lot of that I've noticed is because it's people coming in on pay plans and they're just clearly not. You have success stories. You have people that you've taught this to that have made money. Yes, yes. How much? Anywhere from 1000 a month to upwards of 10000 a month. How many people make eight to 10000 a month? Probably only a few. How many total students do you have? I believe it's just shy of 200. I can get the exact number. If you I have like 200 students. How many of those 200 are making over five grand a month? I'd say probably like five to 10. Let's call it seven. So seven divided by 200. So that means three and a half percent of your students are making five grand. I mean, you could probably get that number up, but that's not horrible for a thousand dollar course. How many people are making at least, how many people made their money back? There's a lot of people that reached out to me like way later on and were like, yeah, I'm successful now. And it's like, you don't, you know, they're not really like telling me, so to speak, but I would say there's a large percentage of people that have gone in, if they followed what I told them to do and actually went and executed on it, they've made at least a thousand bucks back. Yet. Do you have an email automation set up where 30, 60, 90 days after someone buys your program, you check in with them? I haven't done that for this, no. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and write that down. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Like you don't even know, bro. You could have such a high success rate and you don't know. And you could have all these assets for promoting this and, and, and increasing belief in people. Like I see how I can make money and I'm going to give you a pitch for it, by the way. I'm going to give you a pitch, but please, for the love of God, check in with your clients. What's your social? Mainly Facebook, but I really don't do anything with social media marketing, if I'm being honest. Well, I asked you, uh, we had a phone call like three, two, three years ago. And I basically said to you, how do you do this all day? And I just, I don't know, I, I can't somehow get myself to start posting. I just don't, I just don't do it. You need a therapist, not a business coach. You want to be in the big leagues. You can't be sitting around saying, I just don't post because like that, that's therapy. Okay. You got to get over that. Do you make enough money? I mean, right now I've been basically just chilling out like having a good time in life. Okay, well then that's the thing, man. Look, there's two things that are gonna make you wanna make more money. Either you're not making enough to survive or you have big goals and big dreams and you're not there yet. I imagine you have enough money to survive, right? So you're happy, your kids are happy, your wife's happy. Yeah. You have enough money. Yeah. Do you have any reason to wanna make more? I mean, right now we wanted to do a big renovation, like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar renovation. So that's like a good motivator right now, you know, like, hey, let's get that done. Okay, and how many times in life do you think stuff like that's gonna come up? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. So then yeah. why don't you make more money? You clearly can. You can. You're just choosing to not do it. Well, I've been put putting like 90% of my time has been going into doing the product review business itself, which is why. In then why don't you just scale that? Why don't you, why don't, why don't you just hire people to do product reviews for you? You tell them exactly what to do, exactly what to say. You pay them hourly and you just scale like that. Why don't you just do that? So that's a, a big thought that obviously crossed my mind, but Amazon has limitations around that. And that's how people get banned and removed. For How are you gonna find out? Because I've seen people who do it. Can you take a cut? Is that okay? Well, no, like that's the thing is the brand and the face and the reviews has to be me. Like at best, maybe I could. All right, so what do you need to do to triple the amount of money you make with Amazon product reviews? Right now, that is like a big, basically impossible to qu answer question because they're split testing. <laughs> they f with stuff. Income goes down, income goes up. Like we just had Amazon Prime Day. I'm sure as you know, Amazon just did their big Prime Day this past month. So I saw a massive boost in revenue. Last month, they were split testing stuff. They don't tell any of us about that. So it would, it would kind of be like YouTube just all of a sudden being like, hey, this month we're going to cut like 50% of what you're going to make. Or there's also competition, right? So if I review this mini fridge back here, maybe that's selling like crazy. But then five other people go review that. It may bump me out of placement. Now that competition has flushed me out. So it's like YouTube. You got to stay at it. Exactly. Yeah. Which I've been doing, which is why it's been staying afloat. So it's like any other business. These aren't yeah. excuses. These aren't problems. No, no. And I, that's where I've been putting majority of my time. Like every, literally every month I'm uploading okay. 100. So here's what you're going to do. All right. You're going to use the same amount of time. So do you have an Amazon review that I can see? Yeah, you could just, I have like a whole page where you could Send see Send me all a link to one review. Show me yeah. a review. I'm going to show you something right now. It'll take you zero time. Okay. It'll take you zero time. So that video that you're looking at above, if you go up, that is the review. Okay, watch this. You take your phone and you go like this. You hit record and you go, you see this? 
Amazon product review. I bought this Street Fighter 2 game. I reviewed it. I posted it on Amazon just like I do multiple products per month. And it made me over $13,000 last month just doing product reviews. I get to buy cool stuff, play with it, talk about it, and make more money than most people do at their job. If you'd like to learn how to do this, DM me the word review, okay? That's it. And then watch. You take it and you post it. Okay, it's not hard. All right. And people go, oh my God, that's amazing. And then they yeah. DM you the word review. Okay. And then you say, hi, Mark. Yeah. Thanks for messaging me about the product review business. I have a video that explains it. I'm going to send you a link to that video. Can you watch it and get right back to me and let me know if you have any questions? Great. Okay. And then, and then you can close them over to you. And first of all, I don't, why are you charging only a thousand? You could charge more for this. You could charge two or three. So there's someone that was a competitor in the space charging 97 for like the introduction to literally just introduce them to like what this model is. Right. So his wasn't like a big course. It wasn't like, you know, what does that matter? It was just a very basic. I've had people teach what I've taught and what have I sold for, for $97 or this, that, or that. And I've, I've sold it for 10 grand. So what? He has a big list. He's spending a lot of money on ads. He spends like four to six grand. So, a if day. a friend of yours has a nine inch dong, are you going to stop yeah. sleeping with women because he has yeah, a big well, of no. Then, what is your problem? Just do it anyway. Well, I don't know where I was going with this was I approached him and said, Hey, you have a much larger list in this same space of the people that I'm trying to attract. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Why don't we create a high ticket offer together? And we just launched that and we got 10 people in that so far. And that's only a month old. How much are you charging for it? 5K one time. Where did this come from? Well, that's so, what I, you hadn't gotten there yet. <laughs> you're giving me hemorrhoids. Okay. Well, you created a high ticket offer around this and you made 50 grand. So far, yeah. 10 people have enrolled at five. I believe like more than half Shocking of them were. that when you raise your prices and let me guess, you sell it over the phone instead of a webinar. Yes. Shocking that you'd make more money doing it that way. Yeah. That's incredibly amazing. Mm-hmm. But why are you still selling the 997? You're just cannibalizing yourself. So he brought me in as the educator, right? Because I'm like the Mr. X. I'm the guy. Well, how much do you get paid for this? So he's giving me a thousand for every person that comes in. <sighs> yeah. So it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's his audience. It's his his closer. So he's going to pay the closer. You're basically selling your course to him. Yeah. I'm giving them access to the well, course. that's cool. Why don't you sell it for 5000 I haven't discredited that, but obviously I don't have a mass amount of people coming in where I'm, you know, the, the initial piece of what I'm doing isn't working. So I guess I was thinking. Well, you're not posting on social. You're running ads that aren't working. Do you understand that when you teach people how to make money? And, and look, there, there's two ways to teach people to make money. There's teaching people that already make money how to make more. And there's teaching people how to make money. For instance, we have an offer where we write emails for business owners. So I'll, I'll just compare two offers, right? One offer we have is where we write a daily email for our, our clients and we have them email their list with it to generate money, right? So it's like, we do this thing for them. They make more money in their existing business. We have a software. We have all these products and services for people who already have a business. You have an offer for people who don't have a business. You're teaching them to create a business. So this is a different dynamic, but you know what they both share in common, the way to market them. The way you market something is you identify a goal and you identify what people are doing that is not working that is also popular. People want to make money making videos. Yeah. Well, how do they do that currently? What, what's, the, what's the most popular way people make money with videos right now? In my opinion, probably utilizing TikTok or Instagram or whatever, and they're just making super generic make money online. Hey, look, I was typing. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Getting paid for your videos, not, not making videos to promote a business. How are people currently getting paid to make videos? YouTube ads. YouTube. They make a YouTube channel. They Mm. make viral videos, but see, that's the thing. They make videos and YouTube pays them, but what has to happen with the video for YouTube to pay them? It has to go what? Go viral. It has to go viral. Okay. So watch this. Have you tried making money with a YouTube channel, but struggle 
to make a dime because your videos aren't going viral? Are you looking for a way to make money online where you don't actually have to start a business? And look, that's why there are so many YouTube creators out there right now who are trying to do that because you get paid by YouTube and you don't have to have a business. And that's great. But the problem is that you have to be so good at creating content. You have to be such a good creator. The competition has got so fierce that you have to be an ultra talented creative to make any money at all on YouTube. YouTube because in order to go viral, you have to put out some pretty creative stuff. Well, what if I told you there is a way to make videos that did not require creativity or anywhere near what YouTube does that did not require to go viral? You can make money with these videos without ever going viral. In fact, how viral or popular the video is factors in very little because you're actually making money from something that's already popular. This is not YouTube. No, this is Amazon. You see, most people don't know this, but there is a way to make money from Amazon, much like people make money from YouTube. But you don't have to go viral and you don't have to have millions of views. It's called an Amazon product review business. It's where you go and you find products that need reviews. And you do a review of the product, a video review. And when people watch that video review, if the person buys that product, you get a percentage of the sale. So you don't actually have to make a video that gets millions of views. You just have to make the best review. And I'm going to show you a step-by-step process to know exactly how to make a video for a product on Amazon that ends up being the best review. Because when it's the best review, you get paid for it. Last month, this right here is a screenshot of $13,000 in income I made reviewing products on Amazon. Behind me is a massage chair that I bought on Amazon. It paid for the, I see, I don't know this part. Do, do, Do they have to, can they return the products or what's the deal with that? Yeah, if they did, you would just lose your commission. No, no, no. You got, you got to have the product to review the product, right? Correct. So how Correct. do you how do you do that? You got to get a load of products. So you got to spend money on the products. Yeah, or or people send them to you for free. Companies will pay you. Okay, you so that part. Okay, so yep. and you might think, well, doesn't that mean I got to buy a lot of products and then review them, and that means I got to spend a lot of money? Well, sure, you could do it that way, but I'm going to show you how to get these companies to send you the products for free. It's all in my whatever training, okay, where I'm going to break down exactly how I make money doing product reviews, exactly why it's a hundred times easier to create a video that makes money on Amazon rather than YouTube, and how to do this where you don't even have to buy the products yourself. Click the link below. That is how you would do it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Now, what did you learn? What did I do different? I think the biggest being the the target, right? The, The struggling YouTuber, basically. Yes, you're, a, you're, you're, you're throwing rocks at an old method. You always have to have an old, you make two sales. You have the old method and you have the new method. You sell them on the new method. Once they're sold on the new method, then you sell them your product to help them execute on the new method. And, and trust me, people who aren't even making YouTube videos, they're going to see that and they're going to be interested. Do you have any idea how many Facebook groups, how many pages have struggling YouTubers? Oh yeah, yeah, it's probably insane. You have an unlimited amount mm. of traffic. Like, do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, that was basic. That was the main area that I was focusing for social. Like, that is where I post if I post. How much did you make from your YouTube channel last month? I mean, obviously, it's just ad monetization, so it's not a lot. It's like a few hundred bucks. Okay, so you make a post. Hey, I only made a few hundred bucks from my YouTube channel last month. Nowhere near where I make with Amazon videos. But here's some things I did that blah, 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 who cares? And then people people are going to go in the groups are going to be, wait, what did you make with the, the... Amazon videos. You can make money with Amazon videos. Yeah, I made thirteen thousand last month in a comment. How'd you make thirteen thousand? And then you just give value. You say, "Oh, well," I, and you explain it, just like I explained it there. People yeah. will start messaging you like crazy, and then you just sell them. I would sell them on the five K or or three K or two K or one K or whatever. Like, yeah. dude, you you can make money. But here, here's my main concern with this: you got a lot going on. You got like thirty different businesses all in one personal account, which is a mess. If I were you, I'd focus. If you're truly at a cap with this thirteen thousand dollars, and look, thirteen grand a month doing product reviews is amazing. But if you want to be a millionaire, then you got to ask yourself: Look, am I really capped, or, or can I make fifty, a hundred, two hundred grand a month with Amazon reviews? If the answer is no, that's totally fine. But what I would do is I would make what you make with your Amazon review business the content 
for the educational business. So yes. you're still like, you need to keep doing it. You need yeah. to keep doing it because it gives you all the assets you need to show that you're making it. And then you'll end up making a hundred times more with the educational business. If I were you, I would sell it over direct message and figure out how to do that before you just run crappy ads to a, a webinar and think that's going to do it for you. Right. You didn't make nothing off JVs either. In a whole year, you only made 90 grand and that was your lift and JVs. That's not enough money, dude. That's nothing. It wasn't a lot of JVs, right? And most of them, there were a lot of changes I made in the webinar trying to improve it or shorten things. Or originally the webinar was about making money with YouTube and with Amazon because the program actually had both. So I cut out the YouTube stuff because that's just not- Lack of focus. You're, that's the main thing I see with you is lack of focus. Yeah, that's a common trend with me. <laughs> lack of focus and a lack of motivation. Yeah, I mean, right now, obviously, I want this renovation and these other things to happen, right? But it's how bad do you want it? I mean, enough that I'm willing to figure this crap out because I then don't tell want it, it over DM. Anytime I want to make money fast, I remember one time I wanted to see if I could really sell my mastermind. I just started selling it over DM, 55 grand. I sold people into it over DM and then I did a big event and we did a million bucks and all that. But the point is, is that you can sell stuff just by talking to people. Do that first, make some money and then look for ways to automate that. Where would you post if you were me? Like if I was to pick either a platform or a couple of platforms? Instagram would definitely be one for sure. Instagram. And I, I'd probably just focus on one channel for now. Instagram. Okay. But your personality has to go up. Well, I mean, I'm usually a little bit more uh, perpy or peppy, I guess, in my videos. It's, it's what not? peppy, not perpy. Peppy, perpy what, when what? you are committing a crime. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, tell, I, if you don't even know the word, that's not good. You got you to amp it up, man. If you're not excited about what you do, how can you expect your customers to be excited about what you do? Yeah, no, I agree. You got to be excited, man. How much was that massage chair? Like two grand. Did you have to pay for it? Yeah. You didn't get it for free? Not that one, no. Why'd you buy a $2,000 massage chair? Just because I wanted one, I guess. <laughs> so you're, you you want to do a home remodeling. Well, that, I bought that room. like two years ago. I've had that for like years. Okay, you see my point though, right? Like, yeah, well, well the you, remodel has come much later. How, much, okay, how much money did you make off reviewing that chair? Probably like two or 300 bucks. Horrible decisions, okay? <laughs> Horrible decisions. It's all the time. It, and plus people love it when they That thing is huge. I know, but it's a bull purchase. That's like everything I have, basically. I've got all sorts you, you of- If you're not making the money you want to make, you don't buy BS. You don't buy toys. You buy toys when you have a surplus of money. Well, I mean, I've I put a hundred grand into the house already. I put in a new heating system, paid it off. New solar, new roof, paid it off. Bought a sixty thousand dollar car, paid it off. So I'm not like feeling like things aren't going in a positive direction. But it's again, I kind of is like figuring out where are the bigger goals to get into the more of the mindset that you're saying. You know, like where do I go to get the much bigger? You know, the, okay, let's do the renovation and then let's go buy my wife a sixty thousand dollar car, whatever, hundred thousand. Well, you gotta want it, man. I can't, I can't tell you how to want it. You just gotta want it. And look, there's nothing wrong with being happy with where you are. I'm not though. I'm never happy with where I am. That's why I always strive for more. And not to say that that's a good thing, because that can get out of control too. But the point is that if you are complacent, none of this is going to work. Yeah, I wouldn't say that I am. I kind of. You said you were earlier. No, I think it's kind of a 50 50 with me because sometimes I do just want to chill out and kind of say to myself, hey, enjoy things in life. I just had to go through my mother and father basically went through Alzheimer's and dementia and had all their life savings and they essentially went to a nursing home. My father's on his deathbed and my mother died in February and all their life savings. You know, and it's like, what am I saving all this money for to not buy a massage chair and enjoy it? Am I going to do that when I'm 70 and dying? You know, that doesn't make sense. That was kind of my trying to enjoy the things that I do acquire, right? And that was to me fun things like video games or I just bought a go-kart and then I reviewed that, right? So Did you make your money back on it? I think I've made like two or 300 so far. So How much it's is the go-kart? Like two grand. Well, to me, you're buying crap. How old are you? I'm 38. You're 38, and you're telling me that your definition of enjoying life is buying go-karts and massage chairs. Oh, yeah, for sure. Really? I mean, I have a wife and kid. We spend our time doing family-orientated stuff, and then most of my other leisurely time is just gaming with buddies of mine. I had, like, huge gaming events here. We just did, like, a massive Mortal Kombat tournament with, like, 20 people here. So that's, like, a fun weekend for me, you know, personally. 
Um, well, it's fun for you. It's fun for you. That's totally fine. But I'm just saying if you have big dreams and you need a foundation, you need an arsenal to get there, you can't be wasting your money on BS. I get it. These are fun toys and stuff, but I would focus on making more money so that when you do buy something like this, it's so negligible. And, and look, if you can't remodel your house, it's not negligible. Two grand here, two grand there. You know, Then you remodel your house and now it's worth more. And now you can sell it for a profit. I mean, these are better decisions. Okay. I understand. I get it. You want to do things and gaming is your thing. I get the, but like a go-kart, why do you have a go-kart? You're 38. I don't know. I just thought it'd be a cool thing to have. Use this for your kids. Do your kids have a good time with this? Well, my daughter's only three, so no, she's too young for it. So this is a $2,000 purchase you made just for you, 38, to go play on a go-kart. And you you don't think that's like, you don't see anything wrong with it. You know what I did, Dan? I kind of looked at my life in general, and I said, when was the time I had the most fun in my life? Like, if I looked through all 38 years of my life, and I said to myself, I was probably, like, between the ages of 15 and 18, and I was off every day riding bikes, doing things that were fun like that, playing video games. So I kind of, in my own mental mind, just said, that's how I'm going to live my life as long as I possibly can. you mind if I give you some harsh advice? No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I totally get it. Like, it was sort of just the way I wanted to look at things and how a mindset for me of saying, you know, what kind of life do I want to live? And to me, that was just doing fun things. In a lot of ways, I probably could say to myself, hey, you need to grow up and sell all your video games, get rid of that get rid of your go-karts, stop doing all that stuff. You're 38, you know, you're too old for that crap. And there's like a little voice that says that sometimes, but then at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, what's the point otherwise? Like, what am I going to do with my time? You know, go drinking out at a bar somewhere? Like, it just isn't... Well, no, not that. Here's the thing. Let me just give you my perspective on it, not saying I'm right or wrong. I agree with you. Best, most fun part of my life was the exact same time period when I was doing the exact same stuff. But part of growing up and being a man is you choose to not do the fun things and you choose to do the things that build your legacy. That's the pillar of being a man is choosing to not do the fun things and do something more important instead choosing to pursue your purpose because right now all of those things you're doing the go-kart and the video games and all that all that's doing is satiating you it's making you comfortable and see Mm. when a man or not not even just a man a human being Mm. constantly seeks comfort they become weak let me say that again When when, when you constantly satiate yourself with comfort that is what creates weakness that's the very definition of weakness if you can learn to let go of the things that you want and focus on the bigger picture and not constantly satiate yourself with comfort, that creates strength. When I got wealthy, I learned that I could have whatever I wanted in life. And I did for two years, I did whatever I wanted and I I had more than enough money to do it. And then I realized that that constant satiation, that constant comfort, the dopamine, it was making me weak. And it made me so weak that it caused me a lot of problems in my personal life and a lot of problems in my business. Not because of the necessarily the decisions I made or what I bought, but the habit of seeking comfort made me weak. When I first started, I made millions of dollars effortlessly. I had good focus. I had good resolve. I was able to manage my emotions better. After I got wealthy and I started seeking comfort over and over again, I noticed that I had less focus. I had less resolve. I had less ability to manage my emotions. And I realized that if I kept going down that path, I was not going to be able to deal with the struggles and and the bumps in the road for the next 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. And God knows how devastating it could be when I'm not able to deal with those. And so Mm -hmm. right now, what do you have going on? You have have a lack of focus. You have poor decision-making because there's some Several things we went over here that you're aware of that you could have made a better decision and you didn't. You have you like there's all these problems that are happening now. Imagine how this is going to evolve into even worse issues down the line. See, a man, a man evolves or he dies, and so I'm not telling you that you shouldn't have a go kart. I'm not telling you that video games are stupid. I'm telling you that the constant satiation and the constant seeking of dopamine and the constant seeking of comfort is going to make you weak, and when you're weak you don't accomplish your goals. The way that you're doing it just happens to be video games and 
uh, go sure. bites. For me, it was drinking and weed and women and going on yachts. That's what it was for me. I don't. I hate video games. I can't stand them. Okay, but 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 that, that that's the same. We were doing the same thing. Same type of stuff. Okay, yeah. and I, I get it. I understand it. But what I'm telling you right now, it's it's making the foundation of who you are as a man weak. I'm not concerned about the video games. I'm not concerned about the go kart. I'm concerned about what you do with a weak frame mm-hmm. moving forward. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm not, yeah. I'm not trying to make fun of you because you're 38 and you play video games. It's that you're you're creating weakness and mm. you're going to move forward with that weakness. That is the point. Have you ever taken an ice bath? No. Yeah, yeah, I started I doing ice baths. If you can get in an ice bath and mentally deal with it, it builds strength. If you can go to the gym and constantly work out it's not yeah you'll look better but it builds mental strength if i'm on vacation or i'm traveling i find a gym if i can't find a gym i find something to do push-ups on if i can't find good food i go find the food right i'll go make the food. i'll go find vegetables I'll, I'll figure it out i don't just say well i'm on vacation uh, no i figure it out period mm. the point here is that if you want if you really truly want anything in life if you want to be able to accomplish anything you want you absolutely have to give up things that make you comfortable for the simple sake of creating strength it has nothing to do with the video games it has nothing to do with, it has to do with the fact that strength helps you navigate life and do big things and if you constantly make yourself comfortable and you constantly satiate yourself you will not be strong. I've listened to Alex Becker talk a lot about this same topic, like the dopamine hits and the constant, you know, just feeding yourself. And I've had similar conversations with Cat Howell talked a lot about how it's like you have everything. Like, why do you just need to feel like you need to constantly be acquiring all this in a sense? It's somewhat bad because the Amazon business feeds this more, right? If I go buy the go-kart, I can review that. I can write it off on my taxes and then now I'm having fun with it, right? So you're at a net loss. Yeah, yeah. But I would have bought it anyway, kind of thing was my men- mental state around it, you know? That's another problem, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. As of recently, have been realizing it's like, I don't need all this. Shit. Like, it's almost a little overwhelming. Like, I have just been acquiring things to acquire. When was the last time you went to the gym? I have like a home gym here. Um, when was the last time you used it? Probably two weeks ago. I've two really weeks? Started. Yeah, I, I fell off. I was doing it pretty consistently for a year. Or if you have time to play video games. Yeah, I've I've definitely f***ed off a lot recently, yeah. Yeah. Gotten to a bad habit, I guess. Nothing like crazy where I'm going and like getting drunk or Do you like, think women like strength or weakness? No, of course strength. I mean, my... Do you think your wife walks in and goes, look at that strong man playing video games for 10 hours? Yeah. <laughs> okay. no. Well, she games too, sometimes more than oh, me. Oh, so. God. Yeah. So. Jeez. Oh, boy. All right. So you're just all kinds of screwed. All right. Look, here's my <laughs> challenge to you. Sell this over DM. Make the new pitch. Compare it to YouTube. Stop with the dopamine hits or at least start reducing them try it you will see more strength you will see more focus we use oh and i don't post on social media yeah because you're whacking off on video games all day you're you're constantly doing what you want so when you're faced with something you don't want to do you just go i'm not going to do it but if you didn't constantly give yourself what you wanted you would have that resolve to say you know what i'm going to do it i'm going to post today does that make sense you're, you're, it's not there. Look, you got to decide if you want to make money or not. That's the biggest thing you got to get out of this call. You got to decide. If you don't, then that is fine. I'm not hating on you. Okay. I'm not hating on you a bit. Uh, the fact, and if you can admit it, I'll respect you even more. Go play video games, make your 10 grand a month and, and ride off into the sunset in your virtual horse game or something. Right. But, but if you do want to make money and you do want to be successful, then right now you're both you're slacking off. You're making terrible, terrible decisions and you need to fix it. And you need better friends. You need a better routine and you need better decision making, better focus. But that's only if you want to be a successful entrepreneur. If you don't, then you're doing great. (laughs) So you got to decide what you want, man. Uh, Again, I'm not hating on you. I'm just telling you to decide. And when you decide, you stick to it. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I'm not denying it at all. I hope this helps, man. Go do those things that I mentioned to you. Email me back in 30 days and let me know how it went. All right. I think that sounds good. All right, man. Thanks for your time.